Hey there YouTube, I'm Jack and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Hope everybody out there had a lovely weekend. Um, today we're going to get off the subject of food just a little bit and talk about something that I consider uh, very important for our uh, mental well-being, um, stress levels, and just basically a happier life in general. So what we're going to talk about today is how practicing non-reactivity will change your life. Um, I, you know, I notice this online all the time and I've noticed it for a number of years now. Um, so many people like go through their whole day online and they probably do this in real life as well, um, creating more aggravation for themselves because, well, and I'm going to read a couple of piece articles here and kind of get my thoughts on them, but a lot to do with the ego. I've kept my online presence so peaceful over the time that I've been online um, because fortunately I, uh, I was, well, I was a drunk for a long, long time in my life. <laughs> fortunately, I gave that up coming up on 10 years. So um, I really wasn't in a bad frame of mind. <laughs> well, in other words, like luckily all my craziness happened before the internet or I, could, I can see so many like little aspects of this in my former personality and uh, and a lot of times I'm going to read and talk to this, talk about this a little bit, but a lot of times it is not for some very enlightened purpose that I don't react to things. It's just only for my state of mind because, like I say, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, TikTok's bad, Twitter, it's all day, every day, um, people reacting basically to what somebody else has said. And what I've noticed over the last several years, maybe always, is that nobody's changing anybody's mind. Like this person says something, you feel like you have to say something about that, like you're the moral arbiter of the universe. And it just it just descends into a lot of aggravation. So anyhow, let me uh, let me read a little bit of something I was reading this weekend. This wasn't a real planned video. I just was reading something myself and I thought I'd share. There is a profound peace found only in non-reactivity. This is the stillness of the true self imbued with the natural aura of its gracious humility and total understanding as expressed through the absolute and unquestioned acceptance of all that is. <laughs> This is the conscious realization of aware presence, empty of effort, effort and resistance. This is the essence of absolute awareness. Um, this is, let's see, I didn't make any marks here. It is only the imagined self, the self-perceived identity, the self-perceived identity, who can become offended by another person's words, or who feels that it needs to defend its personality, character, beliefs, and opinions. That's where it's usually coming from, is the, you know, the self-righteous person feeling that they have to educate the other person, or um, you know, kind of defend whatever it is about them that's being attacked. It is only this false self who is angered by whatever it believes might threaten the security of its false facade. It is only the ego who demands respect. It cannot tolerate being challenged. Do not be stirred by the dwelling of any emotions that tempt your retaliation, your sarcastic retort, that's a big one for me, or your spiteful reply. Do not entertain any demands from the ego whatsoever. Mindfully observe the storm of thought that swirls within you. React not. Silence your serpentine tongue and observe your mind's egoic activity with curious attention. To whom do these thoughts appear? Who is the I these thoughts seek to defend? Quiet the mind and these answers will become clear. There is no entity called I. There is only egoic thinking to which your mind has become emotionally attached. Do you see how the self and its beliefs are empty of any existence outside of uh, the thought that thinks them? Take it upon yourself to realize the profound peace that can only be found in your non-reactivity. Allow your ego to be poked, but do not respond. This strengthens the resolve of your presence of awareness while weakening your reliance upon all of that which is false. Ignore the subjective mind as it interacts with the world and you will notice its voice become quiet. When the ego is starved of your attention, its control over you will begin to disappear, allowing your true self, your aware presence to shine clear. 
That's a good little piece. I'll do my best to remember to drop this, drop a link to this. The, the website is zenthinking.net um, down below. And like I say, this, is, this has served me so well throughout the years, especially having a YouTube channel and you know being a presence on other social media because I can't say never. Maybe I have at some point, but I, ch I never respond to negative um, comments. It's like that's that person's thinking. I mean, it just, it's not even so much that I'm being, like I say, I'm being this enlightened being. It's just like, I know. When that person says something, here's how it's going to normally happen. If I don't respond, they've usually got it out of their system and they're not going to come back and they're not going to keep going over and over. If I respond to that and we get into a back and forth, then that becomes an obsession for them. Here's another piece I was reading last night uh, before I went to bed that's also a good one. And it's called Practicing the Art of Non-Reaction. Starts to give a little bit more... Um, like tools to deal with this. Non-reaction can benefit you in many important ways, including in helping you manage stress and improve relationships. Think about that. It's not just the aggravation and the way you're dealing with other people, it's actually stress, which goes back to your health. Using slow diaphragmatic, diaphragmatic breathing, meditation, and other informal mindfulness practices, you can respond more effect effectively to what comes up for you in any given moment. The art of non-reaction. Non-reaction is about delaying how you react to circumstances until you've uh, carefully considered what is happening and how you want to respond. Now, okay, somebody out there might be saying, okay, I'm not interested in learning how to meditate or meditation isn't for me or I don't meditate. If you don't meditate, it can be just as simply, you can always say something later, just stop. Don't say anything. Don't, don't do things in haste. Uh, think about everything you do just a little bit before you do it. But I will say that meditation is a great way to help. You can, also pro you can probably also remember a time when something disappointing happened to you, but you didn't react until you thought it over and absorbed what was happening. Or, wait, let me start. I missed a section there. No doubt you remember a time in your life when you lashed out at someone in anger and gre regretted what you said or did in response. Your actions didn't represent what you truly meant or how you wanted to relate to others. You can probably also remember a time when something disappointing happened to you, but you didn't react until you thought it over and absorbed what was happening. You probably responded in a way that felt more comfortable to you in hindsight. This is non-reaction. The concept of non-reaction isn't new or esoteric. You probably remember when you were a kid, a parent or other adult admonishing you to think before you speak. Sometimes that is easier said than done, though. Non-reaction, while simple in theory, is challenging in practice. Ain't everything. It's tempting to just say what's on your mind. And there are times when that is appropriate. But a reaction is often so automatic that you haven't had the time to consider the meaning of the circumstance you find yourself in. This is where meditation can help. How meditation helps. One of the greatest benefits of meditation is how it can change the way you respond to challenging situations. It can provide you with a different level of awareness of what circumstances trigger your reactions and more clarity about how things really are. After practicing meditation for a while, you will notice that the practice reverberates into your everyday life. That's what I find and that's what I found when I got away from my meditation practice that even though I wasn't doing my daily meditation practice, those tools were still there. And I would use a lot of those things still to, you know, keep me from overreacting to a situation or being hasty to jump to a conclusion. Um, your response has become more in line with the nature of your situation and your goals. And when you re do react in negative situations in a way that does not serve you and others well, that happens to everyone. You may find that you recover more quickly. This practice is a work in progress. We all have different things that trigger us at different levels of intensity, right? Practice is key. To benefit though, practice on a regular and continuous basis. Even if you only have a few minutes, build the practice in your life and try to meditate every day. I've done other videos. Um, I've got a link to my Facebook page, not group down below, where I've talked about some beginner some beginning meditation. I do highly recommend it. It doesn't have to be this overwhelming thing where you sit down in uncomfortable positions for an hour. It can be very, very simple. 
Um, as you continue to practice, you will become better at noticing your emotions and reactions and choosing how to respond when challenges arise. Using the stop technique to relieve stress and reduce anger. Many people search for years to find a low cost way of managing stress and anger and feeling more in control. With those for whom slow diaphragmatic breathing and meditation resonate, you can only be a, f a few short minutes away from the stress relief you need in at least some situations. A popular informal mindfulness practice called the stop technique is another powerful practice that you can incorporate into your daily life that will help you give yourself space to respond in stressful circumstances. Give the following steps a try and see if they help you. S. Stop for just a moment. Don't auto automatically react to the situation. Breathe. Reflect. T. Take a breath. Follow your in and out breath. Sense the chest and belly rising and falling. O. Observe your experience. Notice what is happening in the body. Observe your mind's chatter and your emotions without attaching or being drawn in. Pay attention to where your body and mind are in this moment. And P. Proceed. When you are ready, respond or not in a way that you feel is most fitting for the situation. Next time you begin to feel anxious or angry, remember that you have a choice about how to respond. Remember that. You can react in a way that does not lead to effective resolution or respond in a way that does. Makes you feel better about yourself and enhances your relationship with others. I used to do this. Listen, I've off and on, I dabbled in meditation for many, many years, even way back when I was crazy, a drunk, getting up, getting into all kind of trouble, doing all kind of stuff. And I remember a couple of uh, high seasons in an area where I was living, bartending at this very, very high, bo high volume um, bar restaurant. It was mostly a restaurant. And there would be times when people, I, you know, I was here in an area in the South where I wasn't used to dealing with people as much after a while and I would use this all the time. I had a big walk-in cooler behind my bar and when people start pushing me into that red zone and I felt like a rubber band that was about to snap, I'd walk back in that walk-in cooler and literally, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't, I, I knew what mindfulness was. I had started reading Thich Nhat Hanh way back then, but all I did, breathed in and out for four or five breaths because that's all the time I had in a busy restaurant like that and I would come back out and it would diffuse the situation. It's similar to a boiling, think of a boiling pot on the stove. That boil, that what you got a top on it, a lid on it. That water starts boiling, starts boiling, starts boiling. If you don't do something, it's going to blow over. Just let that lid off for a minute. Let some of the steam blow off and it's fine. But um, yeah, but the reactivity, it's a game you're never going to win. It's, it's like there's really, you know, there's not even a lot of arguing with that because if you can think about times when reacting quick, well, practical situations, there's always going to be a practical situation where we need to react right away. So don't take that to mean everything in our physical part of life. But uh, I'm telling you, everybody complains about their internet experience all the time and social media is this and they're doing this to us and they're doing that to us and you control most of it and most of it you can diffuse and you can make your online life and your real life day to day a lot more peaceful and you know just a lot less stressful on you by just practicing a little bit of non-reactivity at least it i'm going to finish with this even if somebody might disagree out there, you can always say it in five minutes. Okay, like if you're typing emails or doing or sending or talking to somebody through message and it gets heated, wait five minutes. At least just think about it. There's nothing that's going to be a there's nothing that's going to happen if you just wait five minutes. Um, and do the same thing online. You'll you'll see how freeing that is. Is the next time you get a negative comment on something or somebody coming after you, don't respond. Don't say a word. No response. No response. No response. Kind of freaks people out a little bit too. But anyhow, just my two cents worth. I was sitting around on a Sunday afternoon. Wanted to kind of connect with you. I had been reading this stuff last night. It was real interesting to me. So I just thought I would share. Might put this out this evening, Sunday, or I might put it out tomorrow. So if I'm saying Sunday, it could possibly be Monday before you see it. But uh, 
Anyhow, have a beautiful day, whatever day you watch it. Have a great week. If you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you again next week. Peace.